Hello! Welcome to the Rotten Horror Picture Show, the horror movie podcast where we talk about films off the Rotten Tomatoes 200 Best Horror Movies of All Time list. This is our 100th episode. My name is Clay, and with me finally, (laughs) again, is Amanda. Mm -hmm. Amanda, how are you doing? And how severely were you afraid (laughs) that you were going to lose your job, which is why you came back? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Good. Was it the fear of losing your job or the excitement (laughs) over what we're covering today on our 100th episode that brought you back? It was the excitement. Excellent. I just gotta say, I just gotta say, I, I don't, I don't fear Wes. He's pr- he's plenty busy. I don't think he's looking for another job. <laughs> That's well, yeah. Well, you never yeah. know with him, honestly. Well, he might fair. be. Yeah. Um, yes, we. Uh, uh, I I had teased that I um, we were going to cover what I consider to be the scariest zombie movie mm. of all time. Did anyone guess it? Yes. Ah, did everyone guess it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which means only one Good. person listens to the show. No, it's our it's our listener <laughs> Kyle, who um, has a working knowledge of every show that we do. Wow, to a, a, a an extent that kind of concerns me a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it. Yeah, I was gonna say he's just a dedicated fan. He is. We love it. And if we're all he has in his life, that's fine. Because he's mean, he's all we have. We're too. here for him. Yeah. <laughs> In a very uh, non-binding sense. Yes. It's a symbiotic relationship. Yes. Too well. As long as we keep distance mm-hmm. and never meet in real life. Anyway, <laughs> we are doing <laughs> Michael Jackson's Thriller, mm. which is not on our list. Uh, I guess this counts as a wild card. It also, uh, it does, it has no Rotten Tomato score. Wow. Because uh, it's, I, IMDb Look at, I go away for just like a couple months and look what happens. Just, just no Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, just throwing it. Not on the list. Nope. I'm just, you know, you're lucky I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I'm back to right this ship. <laughs> it does. It does have an 8.7 out of 10 on IMDb, which is pretty good. Cool. Um, I'm sure some people have probably seen this or I hope are, so. Have heard of it. If you haven't, you should pause this podcast. Go watch it because it only takes about 15 minutes. It's, yeah, it's about 15 minutes. And then it's come back. Short. Um, it's from 1983. Jeez, really? Yeah. Yep. I wasn't born yet. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have a rating, as I said, but it's number one in my heart. Mm. Um, had you seen this before? Yes. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it for, for quite a while, but this, it was This a... is one where I feel like it's like, what is your history with Thriller? Yeah, yeah. Less of a have you seen it and more, yeah. more of a where has it popped up in your life and what did you think about it? Yeah. Um, I think the first time I ever saw it was probably on or around a Halloween night when I was pretty young. I have like memories of sitting in our family room with the TV on and I think it came on. I don't know if it was MTV mm-hmm. or VH1 or what, but I remember not understanding, <laughs> mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. not fully understanding what was going on and was this a movie or a TV show and was Michael Jackson a good guy or a bad guy in Great it? questions. And I didn't care. Narratively. A little bit spotty, but we'll get right. into that. And I just remember getting very sucked into it. Um, and then as somebody who did a lot of dance when when I was a kid and a teenager and into college, this was one we would like turn on and study and try to copy and learn all the mm-hmm. dance moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether you're a college student from Massachusetts or a flash mob from like Thailand, people yeah. love to do this, <laughs> do this dance. It's a real fun dance. <clears throat> yes. Uh, this is what, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is mm. this is kind of one of the ground zero core texts mm. for me as far as getting into horror movies. This and is a core, a core memory for young clay. Yeah. I can very safely say that this music video, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that, um, essentially put me off zombies till I was like oh. in my late teens because it freaked me out so much. Oh, that's funny. Yes. The zombies in this movie scared me to the point that to this day i still kind of am uneasy in cemeteries like if i like if you know if you're there for a funeral or whatever you know the reality of the situation kind of hits you about it but like if you're <laughs> if you're, if i'm like walking through a cemetery funerals hand wave hand yeah, wave, yeah, yada 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 it happens to everybody yeah uh if i'm like just walking through a cemetery mm-hmm. 
especially one that has like broken stones and is oh, like old. Those are my favorite. Kind of freak me out. Those are my those are the best ones. It is true, which is ironic because those are the ones least likely to have bodies come up out right. of the ground because right. they're all dust and yeah, dirt. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who was buried there was buried there like 250 years ago. Yeah. You don't have anything to worry As about. As we talked about in the episode about zombie on our video mm-hmm. nasties sequence mm-hmm. sequence sequence is that what we're calling <laughs> yes. them now uh the idea of a 400 year old zombie yeah. in conquistador yeah. regalia coming doesn't, back to life doesn't work least realistic thing in the movie yeah you might get some buttons that scary, come, come, come to life and chase buttons. you down the street yeah but yeah like honestly the thing that freaks me freaks me out the most in cemeteries are mm-hmm. those like ma- those like mausoleum things oh like because you go to a cemetery and you see one that has like a window broken. oh my friend i like, have, I have some kinda... photos to show you of uh the cemetery <laughs> Not the first time i've heard that yeah. <laughs> the cemetery in uh, buenos aires oh the yes, big with the big historical one it's, yeah. it's got well I, mausoleums I... that are essentially uh studio apartments yeah yeah. I mean, I love them. Yeah, like I, uh, fascinating. What is it? Highgate Cemetery. Oh, so so cool. It's my favorite. But like I, I have always. There needs to be a little bit of distance. No. For me. No. Like, I've seen thing. I've seen videos of. I would of, erect uh, myself a shack and live in a cemetery if they let me. I know this. <laughs> like anytime I see someone on YouTube like going through, I, I watched a video of someone going through Highgate one time, mm-hmm. and they went into this section of Highgate where it was like you could just walk in, and there's just like coffins. Yep. That have that are from like 200 years old, just yep. busted open in pieces. Yep. The crypts. No, no, thank you. Ah, come on. It freaks. It's They're very freaky to me. You probably wouldn't love the catacombs in Paris, then. That's a little different because it's just bones. Yeah, and it's like. It's the whole, I don't know what it is, but like the, the whole, the whole trappings of the cemetery mm. freak me out a little bit. Whereas the catacombs are like designed kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like if it's one of those like things. They're touristic now. Like yeah. they, there are paths and there are, yeah. I see what you're saying. Like mm. if it's one of those things where it's like, here's a bunch of, here's like 1500 skulls we've turned into a chandelier. Yeah. That's hey, not I've really. I've been there too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's not really that scary. But if it's like. Here's an old mausoleum with right. like some exposed coffins or right. whatever. Right. Or there's a coffin there that's kind of cracked open, but yeah. you don't know what's in it. Exactly. Yeah. That freaks me out. Because I mean, God forbid you drop a sweet beat. <laughs> They're all going to come They're out. They're all going to come out. Yeah. Dance in there. But then know, they just want to dance with you. Dance in their rotting skin off, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't really know. Do we, can we play? There's no trailer to play. I'll play yeah. something here. Yeah. <laughs> And then we'll come back and we'll talk about Michael Jackson's thriller. An MTV television exclusive. Hold on to your seats. Hold on to your arms. Hold on to everything. It's Michael Jackson's Thriller, a short film by John Landis that'll scare you out of your tree. See it here only on MTV. Creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize your neighborhood. Michael Jackson's Thriller, first and exclusively on MTV Music Television. Okay, Michael Jackson's Thriller, directed by John Landis, written by John Landis and Michael Jackson. Uh, The song was written by Rod Temperton, with additional music in the movie by Elmer Bernstein, uh, which was unused music from American Werewolf in London. Nice. And it stars Michael Jackson, Ola Ray, the makeup of Rick Baker, the voice of Vincent Price, and some of the funkiest zombies you'll ever see. (laughs) Amanda, what happens in Michael Jackson's Thriller? A boy and his girlfriend go for a walk. Then that's the first part. No, they do. No, that I later guess too. that's both parts. Yeah. Yeah. Where does he take <laughs> her home from at the end? <laughs> when he says, uh, I'll, I'll take you home. You where, want my synopsis to spoil the ending? Where are they? I, I think they're supposed to be at his Is house. Is it his house? I think so. All right. I guess she fell asleep on the couch. Yeah. yeah all right. I'm yeah. sure. Anyway. Anyway. Some things you'll find in Thriller. Mm-hmm. include a boy who's quote not like other guys mm, that is a statement that aged well yeah in this particular uh, instance yeah. or poorly depending on how you look it at it it usually ages poorly from anyone but yeah. in this case maybe especially so yeah yeah poor man that's ah. all i'm gonna say a were bobcat sure yeah i don't it's know it's kind of feline in yeah it is in presentation it's a very cool makeup Absolutely. No, yeah. it looks amazing, but One it's of the more not, unique. It's less wolfy. Yeah. More. I wonder, 
feline. I wonder if they designed it. I actually don't know this. Uh, I wonder if they designed it separately or if like Rick Baker was kind of basing it on his features. Yeah, like we're, yeah. working off of his face. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the funk of 40,000 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Grizzly ghouls from every tomb closing in to seal your doom. Yeah, see, that's why it scared me. <laughs> uh, you, they tell you in the song yeah that they're gonna seal your doom that they're coming for you yeah um so yes this is michael jackson's thriller uh mike off of his sixth album thriller which was released in november of 1982 and spent months at the top of the billboard 200 in july of 83 after thriller was displaced from the top of the chart michael jackson's manager suggested making a music video for the song thriller So Michael Jackson hired John Landis after seeing American Werewolf in London, and the two came up with the idea for a short film. Uh, It's more of a short film than music video. Apparently, apparently he called Landis at like two o'clock in the morning because he didn't (laughs) know what the time difference was. Yeah, he's like, "Can you do that for me?" Yeah, I would like to do that, please. Uh, The video doubled the sales of the Thriller album, helping it become the best-selling album in history. And uh, in order to make it, John Landis basically brings the entire American Werewolf crew with him, uh, including Rick Baker to Mm -hmm. do the special effects. Which look um, fucking amazing. Yeah, they're they're really, really good. They're so good. And Elmer Bernstein to Mm -hmm. do the music. I guess it was previously existing music, but it's still Elmer Bernstein music in Mm -hmm. a a music video. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, uh, I'm not sure totally how to talk about this in general, but it it starts off in a very... funny way yeah with, like to think about how quaint this is mm-hmm. to open this what is ultimately a very as i said as we were watching it simultaneously incredibly silly and incredibly cool yeah thing with um a reassurance that he does that michael jackson yes. himself does not believe in the existence of ghosts or yeah no <laughs> it's it's uh it does not indicate a belief in the occult mm. i think is i think is roughly how he puts it yeah which is really interesting because he was um what is it jehovah's witness yes. or seventh day adventist I or th- i think it was jehovah's i know prince yeah. was a jehovah's witness i think he, michael jackson well, was also a jehovah's witness devoutly christian yeah um especially his family right yeah, yeah. so this probably was very controversial when he said hey everybody guess what i'm doing yeah (laughs) his dad was probably like absolutely not yeah it's just could you imagine like (laughs) i would just love to see like lil nas x put this same (laughs) caption in front of that video where he twerks on satan's dick oh man i mean he would put like the ops the opposite caption on the front of that video he would be like i absolutely fucking believe in the occult yes yeah (laughs) like come at me um but yeah what what you end up getting is this really interesting little short film mm-hmm. that uh, the thing I was thinking as we were watching it. Yeah. Um, there's things that are have become ubiquitous in pop culture or whatever. Yep. That I greatly wish I could go back and watch for the first time, like mm-hmm. as it premiered. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted to see like Black Sabbath in 1969 mm-hmm. or something before people knew what the hell they were watching. Yep. Um. And this is one of those things, because like, could yeah. you imagine? Michael Jackson's got a new mi- music video coming out. Cool. Yeah. I like Billie Jean. That right. was pretty fun. Uh, let's see what this is about. And you sit down for this fifteen-minute music video mm-hmm. that has like Hollywood A-level special effects that starts off as this nineteen fifties horror movie pastiche, right? Which then pulls back into the quote unquote real world. Right. Where Michael Jackson is a character in both of these things, yes. but not the same person. Right. And then zombies show up and then yep. um he turns into a zombie for a couple minutes to dance. Yep. And then uh he turns back into a human so he can sing because obviously zombies can't sing. Right, right. I would love to know. <laughs> do you think that was the thing where they were like, should he sing as a zombie or would that be too silly? Like, I wonder I wonder if it was just too hard with the prosthetics on his face to like believably lip sync. Yeah, I think it would have been really dumb looking. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been good looking. Yeah. And uh, so and then so you get through the majority of the song, you hit mm-hmm. all the choruses and then the last like five minutes or so are a legitimate zombie movie. Yeah. With a bunch of dead bodies busting through right. a house. The, the, the girlfriend has fled into this abandoned, creepy house mm-hmm. down the street. 
and Michael Jackson is leading the army of zombies to come after her and mm-hmm. they're punching through windows and coming up through the floorboards and he's crashing through the door and coming at her and they're all like enclosing. Yeah. Like you get that camera shot where it's like down on the couch like she is and they're all looming over her like closing in and blocking out mm-hmm. the vi- the view. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good. good. Yeah. And uh, then she wakes up. In a normal house. In a normal house. Yeah. And I guess that was a dream. And then he's got cat eyes at the end. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I just can't imagine what it must have been like to see that. Well, I think the beauty of, like, this just, this this being a, I'm going to call it a music video rather mm-hmm. than a short film because I do think it's mainly about the song. It is, yeah. Um, but the beauty of it being a music, just a music video, is that it doesn't need to make narrative sense yeah. like you don't have to connect it all together because it is just a vehicle for the for the music right right so you get to do kind of all the fun things and not worry about logic i guess yeah you know you can just like have the cool moments and have the cool visuals and have the great dance sequences and then you can just get out of there you don't yeah. need to worry about explaining any of it yeah because i i it, it is so disorienting like narratively Mm-hmm. but I've never th- really thought about it until now. Right. Because as I'm watching, I'm going like, what are the rules here? <laughs> you can just turn into a zombie, turn back into a zombie, and turn back into a human? Yeah. Wh- wh- why is he in the movie, but he's also in the, is he the star of the movie? Well, I, I love, I want to go back to the fact that it starts with this sort of 1950s mm-hmm. pastiche, because I kind of forgot that. Oh, this sure. This time through, yeah. that it starts like that, and then and ends up, differently and i think it's really i think it's really great because it 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 has this sort of hokey vibe to it at first where you're a little bit like wait a minute i don't remember the acting in this being so bad (laughs) (laughs) and then you realize it's supposed to be bad like they're 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 playing it up like she's in the poodle skirt and he's in the letter jacket and there's like the whole i'm not like other guys thing yeah i think he's Um, okay I think he's not bad. Yeah, but I don't think I, I don't think either of them are actually bad. Right, but I think yeah. they're playing oh, those yes. stereotype. You know, it feels like a scene from the movie Grease. Yes, it does. And like Man. they're very intentionally a like better version of the yeah, movie Grease. And because there's werewolves yeah. or were bobcats or whatever. Um, Sandy, I'm not like other boys. <laughs> what would what would uh, Danny Zuko t- transform into though? Uh... I was going to say something off color, but <laughs> inappropriate to Italians. <laughs> it just transforms into the caricature from a pizza box. No, oh. <laughs> I was going to say a car. The, well, he yeah. just turns into the car. Michael Jackson does that too, yeah, in the, but in, in a different thing, yeah. in Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Another bafflingly narrative. <laughs> Is video. that going to be your next wild card? Maybe. Yeah. It's not very scary, but it's could it's be a really interesting. Like a car phobia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then we get we get the great were, uh, werewolf transformation. Oh yeah, that very good. Is probably one of the best werewolf transformations. It's yeah, it's really you know? good. Because again, it's a, it's that Rick Baker style and, and attention to detail and all of that. But you get it like condensed. Like they do a really good job of doing a very thorough werewolf transformation in a pretty short amount of time yeah they they kind of do the more old school kind of thing where it's more like the the classic wolf man where he's yeah he's got a jacket and long pants on yeah so he only stays have to like change his hands vaguely his human yeah like mostly human physically and it's just the head and the hands like, yeah Bleh. it's not quite david Naughton naked yes. on the floor yes <laughs> elongating his body <laughs> yeah but yeah. for what they had to do it's pretty effective. I think so. And like that final, that final reveal of the bobcat thing mm-hmm. is just really, really cool. Yeah. And the 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 whatever the growl that they put on there was really yeah. Good. What's really funny is if the you watch, eyes are fun. Yeah, if you watch the, um, the making of documentary that they mm-hmm. produced with it, I guess. So I guess what they did was, uh, it was it was difficult to finance this because. <laughs> Uh, shockingly, Michael Jackson saying, I want to make a music video for my song about monster movies yes. using the team from American Werewolf of London n- was not an immediate green light. Yeah. <laughs> and so one of the things they did was they also produced this little documentary mm. so they could put the music video and the documentary on VHS and sell it, ah. which became like a huge, sell- big seller. Yeah. Um, but in the docu- in a, a documentary, <clears throat> you see that sequence mm-hmm. as they're filming it mm. 
and it's a lot less effective with Michael Jackson screaming oh. while his hands turning into claws. Yeah. And I'm not going to do an impression of it, but you can imagine what it sounds like <laughs> in your head, and you're probably yeah. pretty close. Um, but it's very cool to see yeah. the the in the documentary the special effects and how they how they built it up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was wondering, and I I didn't do uh, my homework for this, so I, I didn't I didn't like Google this myself. But back from vacation, can't <laughs> not even doing it. It's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Look, I can call Wes if you'd rather. Do, <laughs> um, do you think Michael Jackson was the first black werewolf? I think he might have been. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're like, 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 like to be seen on a wider scale. Yeah. If you I, told I, me there was some sort of exploitation movie from. Ooh, great point. Yes. I think there might be yeah. a werewolf equivalent of Blackula out there, but yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I would not be surprised, but I feel like in terms of popular culture that, that, that got big. Yeah. Like he might be. I mean, I can't think of any others. Yeah, Black Werewolf is a great black exploitation title. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to hang on to that one. Yeah, I think he might be. I mean, I mean you know, it, without getting too far into it, it's it's because traditionally there wasn't a lot of black people in horror movies, right? Um, and so it is. It is very yeah. cool to see someone of his stature, especially, yeah, who was into this stuff and and. Uh, Especially, you know, when you think about when this came out, which was 1983, mm-hmm. which is like right in the pocket of the 80s horror boom. Mm-hmm. Different kind of horror, but still, I mean, you've got yeah. American Werewolf, you got The Thing. Yeah. The special effects mm-hmm. is, uh, industry is really taking off. Yeah. The creature effects and stuff. So, like, he picked the perfect time to do this. Yeah. And it, as I was saying when we were watching it before, it always tickles me that, like, the greatest most hugest selling pop album of all time pop single of all time Mm -hmm. is a song about monster movies on television yes and i you know as a kid i knew the video i knew the song i knew the chorus right right like yeah okay sure but i never really listened to the lyrics Mm -hmm. until much later it's easy to do that with michael jackson songs i was listening to it and i was like he's literally talking about watching like space movies like yeah monster movies on tv yeah and the vincent price rap is (laughs) is about like Watching horror movies on late night television, yeah, and being unable to look away, kind yeah. of thing, yeah. And it, it's it, it. I think in my brain, I was always like, "Oh, yes, it's about monsters, right? Right? Like, like a like an Iron Maiden song is about monsters or something." Yes, yeah. I didn't realize it was literally about watching, yeah, yeah, monster about, about on being TV. the one who is the viewer. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard the original version of this? It used to be. It was originally titled Starlight. And so instead of thriller, imagine mm. him going something starlight. Do do oh do, yeah, do, do, do. it's very different. Yeah, and it takes on a totally different vibe. Yep, because then it's like a kind of a shitty disco thing. Yeah, it's just like a like a poppy peppy kind of yeah. generic pop song. Yeah, at but that you point. you throw thriller in there. Yeah, and then that whole. Uh, uh, bass riff and stuff Absolutely. gets like really foreboding. Yep, it's like the most danceably foreboding thing yes. I've listened to. <laughs> no, it's so it's it's so good and it's so interesting that like I it, it doesn't strike me that he did this as like a pandering thing. Like it yeah. seems more like he just really liked American Werewolf in yeah, in London so. and was kind of just like yeah that seems really cool and fun. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. Less of like, ooh, how can I how can I like get my get a new audience into my music? I know, I'll go after like horror movie people. Yeah. Like that doesn't seem to have been it, it maybe it was just kind of a whim that hit him, but it didn't seem to be like a calculatedly capitalist one. Right. It was more yeah. just a pure like I think this is really cool and I just want to do it yeah. and I want to make it happen. And you know, to as I was saying about the time that it came out, I don't think I w- I'm going to go out on a limb and mm-hmm. say Five years later, five years earlier, this yeah. song probably doesn't hit as big. Oh, yeah, no. Video probably doesn't hit as big. No, I think five years later, it it, it gets really quickly to the <clears throat> point of being kind of hokey. Yeah. Or cheesy, mm-hmm. you know? E- even at the time, it could be considered a little bit of a risk, like, which is why I don't think he did it 
to like capitalize on anybody because it seemed just like his own pure interest and whims rather than trying to follow any sort of like horror movie trends. Right, right. Because I could imagine a lot of like horror movie fans at that time thinking this was real dumb. You know, yeah, like, I would be curious like, to know. Res- actually. Maybe respecting, all right, you know, the, the crew of American Werewolf was involved and like, all right, so the quality of the effects and stuff are pretty good. Yeah. But overall, this is a dumb concept because right. it's just some guy dancing around in zombie zombie makeup. That's lame. Yeah. Like I could very easily see like, you know. The thing is, though, it's so good. <laughs> it's so I know, I know, but I'm so but well I'm saying produced. If, if you were like 15 or 16 yeah. when this came out yeah. and you watched it with all your friends, yeah. you would absolutely be like, oh, that's, that's so stupid. Like, well, that's so lame. Me and then maybe you'd go home and be like, no, it was really Yes. Good. <laughs> me personally, I'd be like, that was the dumbest thing ever, yes. right, guys? Yeah. And then I would go home and I would and be like, like, listen yeah, to yeah, it 100,000 like, times. Mom, I really want to buy this VHS tape. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just it is, and it's one of those things that essentially changed how people made music videos. Yeah, because um, it's turned it turns it is a small movie. Yeah, like maybe not a logically coherent one. No, probably, but not. Well, a really it's, fun it's, one. Yeah, it's it's not like if you want to try to make narrative sense out of it and like get really, you know, in the weeds. No, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't not make sense. Weirdly enough, you right? Know? Right. Like it's all there. You get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it it conveys its point very well, um, but just like yeah, the level of production value on it, yeah, and the length of time, like the amount of time it takes as a music video is long. Yeah, like yeah. most music videos are what like three minutes long. Yeah, three and a half maybe, and this is I don't remember exactly how long, but maybe like fifteen. Yeah, and the other thing about it that I've always found fascinating is I don't know if. I'm sure other videos have done this since, Mm -hmm. but as far as I know, it seemed to be the first video that remixed the song to Mm. go with the movie versus making the movie go with the song. Right. You know? So, like, because they change, he sings, like, all, like, three of the verses without going to the chorus. Right. And they go right to the Vincent Price thing. Yep. And then when the zombies are moving they go into that like bass breakdown mm-hmm. i think this is the superior mix of the song personally same because i think that the, the longer version of that bass breakdown yeah, the build is up. awesome yeah yeah and they do all the choruses at the end it's just it's it's really good I think yeah it's, really it's, good. it's also really interesting to just like i don't know i just i don't know i, I look i look at it and it, it incorporates so many horror tropes Mm-hmm. That could have been considered tired even at the time. Yeah. And it still does it in a really fun and effective way. And I think it's because it's so quick. Yeah. Like we're talking yeah. about how long it is for a music video, but it's so short for a movie. Right, right. And so it really just keeps things moving. So you get like using the cliches and the sort of stereotypical touchstones of zombie movies or horror films that feel more like they are from the 50s Mm -hmm. which is part of why i like that little 50s prequel because it feels like he's he's taking the spirit of that all the way through definitely um but it it gives you this like visual shorthand a little bit of like oh yeah it's a spooky foggy night and like they're out alone and there's weird noises and then you see the graveyard and you're like i i get what's happening here and you don't need to like worry too much about orienting yourself you can right. just enjoy it yeah and the way it's presented yeah do you um do you also think it's the scariest movie you've ever seen no okay <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you that's fine i love it I, re- I remember honesty. it scaring me like a couple moments it's scaring me as a kid mm-hmm. like i remember when he like at the very beginning when he's with the girl and he says, I'm not like other guys. And she's like, what do you mean? Long then, story. Yeah. How much time you got? And then, then he, uh, you know, he has his like, uh, uh, and like turns his head. And when he whips his head around and says like, get away, get away or yeah. something that scared the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first time he turns zombie face. Yeah. Scared the crap out of me yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. I th- again, and I the, think and them, like come the zombies kind of shambling around where, freaky those zombies they really look scared really the shit out good because that like they were the i think that was my first introduction to zombies 
And those zombies look better than like Dawn of the Dead zombies. The irony of all of this for me is that when I met you, you were working on Dead Meat mm-hmm. and you were filming zombie shorts with you. <laughs> Sure was. <laughs> with with all your friends, including my now husband. Mm-hmm. And so I think of you as somebody who very much like has a lot of knowledge and background in zombie stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hilarious for me to think of a period in your life where you were just like, absolutely not. Keep yeah. those things away from me. A hundred percent. Like I I I was very zombie averse mm. until uh our friend Sean introduced me to evil dead oh and then it was from there that i went evil dead to like night of the living dead to dawn of the dead like that was when got i it. got really into it interesting yeah but like this was i mean the zombies in this are really creepy yeah and they're like i'm not gonna say they're realistic but they are like the makeup is good it's yes. really good and it's yeah. really like when they do those like whip pans and mm-hmm. stop on like one weird face with like blood coming out, it scared the shit out of me. Well, and again. and I love like when they first have kind of emerged from the earth and they're sort of starting to shamble together through the cemetery, mm-hmm. and you're not getting like super clear looks at any of them. You're just yeah. sort of getting like parts of them and a little bit here and a weird face there, but like it's dark and it's misty, and I think I think that part looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's also the positive message that even if you can't dance while you're alive, <laughs> maybe you can dance when you're dead. Maybe when you're dead and reanimated, you will be that good of a dancer. Yeah, one can only hope. <laughs> uh, we don't want to go too long because we want to do some uh, qu- listener questions. So yes. I'm going to say, I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah. This might be a hot take. Ooh. I would put this on our list. Ooh. You know... I'm I'm going to agree with you ah, because job saved <laughs> because I feel like we keep running into movies on this list where we question if it's even a horror movie. Sure. This is very definitely in the horror genre. Yes. There's no questioning that. The effects look great. There's definitely a couple little scary moments like when he whips his head around and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it has all the trappings of the genre. I I'd I'd put it in there before I'd put some other some of the other things we've we've watched in in on the list. Yeah, and I, I think I do think from a cultural standpoint. Yeah, it's huge very impact. Oh my yeah. god! Like there's there's references and homages to thriller everywhere. Like any any cartoon you watch, mm-hmm. like other songs, kind of play right. off oh, of yeah. it. It's 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 inescapable. And at this point, it's a forty plus year old song yeah it's uh 40 last year i think yeah or maybe 22 i guess it'd be 22 yeah. nope who cares yeah <laughs> uh so yeah michael yeah. jackson's thriller go watch, watch it, it. <laughs> enjoy it scare your children with it <laughs> uh we wanted to take some questions from our listeners and we were sent some which were were very fun mm-hmm. uh the first question is mm. just curious what films have surprised you negatively and positively the most like oh. such as that is one of the 250. Well, first of all, it's 200, not 250. So thanks for not listening. Oh, Clay. <laughs> that is one of the 250 best horror films ever. Or I had never even heard of this one, and it blew me away how good it was. Huh. Okay. So this is a tough question because we have done a lot of movies at this point. We have. We have done, um, well, I guess 100 movies. <laughs> well, we've also done the Patreon That's true. That's true. Series yes. and, and, and things. So I guess my, my clarifying question, and, and we can decide this now amongst ourselves, mm-hmm. is this question referring to things we have watched explicitly off the list? Like th- things that were on the list, at least at the time when we covered it. Uh, I'm going to say things we have watched for the main show. But he, does that include wild cards? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think I have an easy answer for for the one that I had never really heard of that actually like blew me away, and it was Black Christmas. Mm, good choice. Because that's job now <laughs> job job security achieved. <laughs> um, because yeah, I, I had never. I don't know if I had ever really heard of it, or maybe I'd heard of it, but I I was I was unaware of it enough to not know anything about it when we watched it and it is now one of my favorite movies excellent so that one is definitely in the positive column it wasn't society it was not society (laughs) 
<laughs> so, was society your wild card? It was one of my yeah, wild cards. Yeah, I yes. didn't I didn't love that one. Um but it, and a one off off the list, one of the ones on the list that I didn't like where I was like why is this on here was um I'd probably say phantasm. Yes, cor- the, always the correct answer. As yeah, far as I'm it's just like why is this why is this on this list? Why is it so beloved? Like mm-hmm. I I just don't I just don't get that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, the one I'm scrolling back through through our movies so I can try yeah. and jog my memory here. Yeah. I think the one that stands out to me as one where I was like, I don't know why this is on here mm-hmm. is It's Alive. The yeah. demon baby one. Yeah, the like Franken Frankenstein baby one. Yeah. yeah. I know that that has a lot of fans mm. but i was just like i just this is too mm. i don't know it just did not click with me yeah um phantasm obviously is is not a one that i would ever want to watch ever again <laughs> um you know actually my biggest i think uh similarly mm. to black christmas mm-hmm. uh my biggest uh the one that i like la- i don't know how to fit what whatever yeah. the question is uh was in the earth Yay! It was your wild card, which I love. I did it. Yeah, I real I <laughs> would not have watched that movie without yeah. you suggesting it, and I'm really glad that I did because cool. I thought it was great. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. <clears throat> um, let's see. Do you think your tastes, standards, expectations have changed at all compared oh. to when you started? Harder to be surprised, maybe. Hmm. You know, I would I would actually say the opposite of harder to be surprised in in a way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I think doing this podcast has broadened my horror movie horizons oh, quite excellent. a bit. Where the sort of things that I always thought of as horror movies were just like, yeah, like the quintessential monster movie, a haunted house kind of movie, mm-hmm. a child is possessed <laughs> kind of movie. Um, and like, I had never really been exposed beyond Suspiria to like much Giallo. Sure. And I've found a real love for weird folk horror movies. Um, so I, I do think my standards have, have changed in a way where it's, it, it, they've kind of broadened in a way. Like I'm, I'm willing to accept more weirdness as Excellent. horror and that sort of like cosmic horror stuff too yeah. as opposed to it either has to be a slasher movie or a supernatural monster kind of movie yeah like this this podcast has made me go wider in scope excellent yeah. yeah i um i don't know if i would say my standards or expectations have changed but mm-hmm. i i think i have been surprised at how to so as much as we shit on the list yeah <laughs> i do want to give it some credit because mm-hmm. i have been surprised at how many of these i have just legitimately thought were good yeah um like scrolling back through it i can't really th- see that many that i just thought were stinkers yeah and so you know i as someone who i th- kind of felt like i had seen what was worth seeing mm-hmm. um doing this and finding new movies Mm -hmm. that I hadn't seen, whether introduced to me by you or just by the list itself. Yeah. Even the ones that are kind of like questionable list movies that I are movies that like, I don't know, I may probably wouldn't have gone on my way to see that if it hadn't been on the list. Yeah. I would absolutely say, I know I I didn't, I didn't get to participate in the episode on um, one cut of the dead, but I did watch it while I was away. Yeah. Um, and that's one where I probably would have looked at the poster for that and the synopsis for that and just been sort of like, meh, I don't know, I'll get to it eventually. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed that aspect of this. I also really enjoy, and maybe this is, you know, to my detriment, I don't know, but <laughs> I enjoy getting to talk with you um, on a uh, granular level mm-hmm. about what might be going on in these movies. Yeah. Because I really do like... <laughs> pulling them apart yeah same absolutely and, um if you're trying to like deep di- deep dive dissect uh friday the 13th part five yes and the person you're doing it with right isn't in for that right it yeah. just turns into like talking at somebody right and then it doesn't it doesn't there are times where i know this has happened to me where we'll be talking about something and you'll you'll say something because you've caught on to something or noticed something or you've you've 
experienced it differently than I did. Mm -hmm. And then when I hear your take on it, I'm like, oh, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of fun to have that that other perspective to challenge your view. Yeah. So when you're yeah, yeah, when you try and talk about like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to make Greg watch a dark song, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. he's just going to go into the fetal position and cry for two hours. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And me talking at him about it isn't going to do much. Yeah. And it, it's, it's nice to be able to get into that. Otherwise you're just ruining the family reunion, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Telling yeah, your yeah. third you're cousin making, about making Sunday dinner real uncomfortable for everyone yeah. involved. Telling your third cousin about the innkeepers. And it's like, <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> Speaking of which, mm. did you see that you watched the trailer for Maxine? Oh, of course. Very excited. Fucking pumped. Probably my most anticipated movie of the year. Yes. Um, Back to the questions. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, th- I'm thinking in real time because X and Pearl are both on the list. Mm. Maybe we should try to do those before Maxine comes out. Yeah. And we can do like a live stream. Anyway. Uh, cool. anyway. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> why do you think Frankenstein stories are on the rise uh, huh. Such as Lisa Frankenstein, Poor Things, etc. First of all, mm. I had no idea that Poor Things was a horny Frankenstein movie. And so when I got to the theater, you texted me this, and I almost like choked laughing when you said it's horny Frankenstein. When I got to the theater, and I and it, it got to that point, I was like, "Oh, baby, I am excited for this." <laughs> Have you seen it? No, not yet. It's so fucking good. I, I, cause, because I was on another continent for two months, I lost access to most streaming horny platforms and all yeah. horny Frankenstein things. Yeah. So I did appreciate your response question, was, which was, is yes. it more of a horny Frankenstein movie than Flesh for Frankenstein? Yes. To which, honestly, I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what, wait, the question was, why are Frankenstein stories, on, stories the on the rise? I have a theory. Oh, you, you go ahead. I think it's because uh, bodily autonomy has mm. been in the news quite a bit in the last eight years or so. That's that's a good theory. <clears throat> I think there's also something to be said for we've also been very preoccupied with science mm-hmm. for various reasons, pandemic and otherwise. Um, and I think those sort of those sort of like self-made creatures. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, a, like it's it's always sort of out there. Yeah. You're always kind of thinking about it, like in terms of these these genre movies, the like the creature created by someone, right? Um, that then takes on a life of its own in various forms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why specifically right now. I think your bodily autonomy theory is a good one, but I do think these things just kind of you know perennially pop up in our in our collective unconscious and and come out in these these sorts of movies because they're fun to think about yeah it's always it opens up so many possibilities to introduce this creature that is not really it's it's of this world but it's not from it sure you know so you get that fish out of water thing going and it it makes a lot of narrative tension yeah it's a fun one to go back to i'm excited that non-sploitation seems to be coming back between Immaculate and the first <laughs> Omen movie. Nunsploitation. Oh, yeah. Is that a thing? Sure is. Is the internet into this? It is a very well established genre. Oh god. That has had its heyday in like the seventies. My great aunt Dot is rolling <clears throat> in her grave. Um it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> uh I went to see Immaculate um the day my sister was in labor oh. with her first child. <laughs> And so it was. Uh, and did you live stream it for her while she was on? on no, the hospital but I should then? have. She yeah. probably would have appreciated it. It was like forty-eight hours of labor or something. Oh Jesus! Um, I will say, kind of jumping back to the the previous question. Yeah. I I thought that by a hundred episodes in of this, mm-hmm. I would be burnt out. Yeah. But I have actually found myself so much more excited to mm. see not just stuff on the list but just in general yeah like i've been going to i find myself going to the movies more mm. i don't know if that's like a depression thing or what but <laughs> but like i get excited hey man when I if see you're something. putting on real pants and leaving the house i think it's an anti-depression <clears throat> yeah, I thing <laughs> i find myself getting excited to see these new movies and kind of support mm. them like 
Uh, I managed to get to the one theater in Boston that was playing Late Night with the Devil a couple weeks ago. Oh, I'm dying. At like two I'm o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> dying to see that one. It's coming to Shutter next week, I think. Yeah, I think like the 19th or it's something. It's real. Like it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, you know, I went to see Immaculate. Mm. Um, I went to see uh, Love Lies Bleeding, which is not a horror movie, but it's mm. the Kristen Stewart uh, lesbian oh, bodybuilder yes. movie. Yes. It's not perfect. Yeah. But like it is a solid, like classic exploitation movie. Cool. So, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, I find myself still excited to experience new movies and, you know. Yeah, and I, I like like this is off of the questions that were provided, but mm. for me also like I feel not that I have it's not like I know everything now, but I feel more knowledgeable about horror movies in terms of I can spot sometimes more often now what some of the newer ones are referring back to sure, sure. and kind of tracking like a lineage, mm. which I find really fascinating of like people picking up ideas that other writers and directors came up with 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago and then doing something new with them. And I'm thinking like, especially um, like the Ty West movies Mm -hmm. of, of X and Pearl and soon to be Maxine, where it's like so rooted in the time period that the movie takes place in. Mm -hmm. And it's playing with these sort of like horror and drama tropes from those times but putting like a very different spin on it yeah and it's it's a lot of fun now to have a lot more background knowledge on like oh this is kind of like this is what the vibe was like watching x and being able to draw that line directly back to the original texas chainsaw massacre and Mm -hmm. and stuff like that has been really really neat to Um, be able to do that speaking of bodily autonomy (laughs) yeah how do you feel about Um, um being a uh realized forced creation of my own into turning you into someone who I can talk to. <laughs> Cause I, every, every, all, you saying all that stuff, I was like, yes, <laughs> it's working. I don't, I don't think that's a fair, I don't think that's a fair <laughs> assessment at all. Speaking of autonomy, I think you're trying to strip me of mine. No, I mean, part of the reason you asked me to start doing this with you is you knew I liked right, horror movies yeah. already. I just, I, I had no one to watch them with. Right. And so I just kind of felt like, Oh, you know, it's, it's not as fun when, you put all the effort into watching it all and you have no one to talk to. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Once, once you provided me with you as an audience. Could you imagine? Now, isn't it we weird go. with this genre where it's like, could you imagine? Like nobody's going like, man, dude, Kramer versus Kramer. Have you fucking seen it? Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about it? It's like, um, <laughs> it's yeah. the people who are into what this was, stuff. What was that movie a few, a couple years ago where it was like seven women talking or something? Oh, with sure. Like the Amish women in the barn yeah yeah you, you, like a lot of people were like yes it was a very good movie but you, yeah it's not the same sort of like we need to sit here and talk for an hour and a half about this movie let's just go to the comic book store and talk yeah. about zone of interest yeah. while we <laughs> look for soundtrack records <laughs> um how did you ever come up with such a brilliant name for the podcast well <clears throat> uh it came to me in a dream did did did, did your girlfriend or mother submit this question (laughs) no but the person who did will probably find that very funny uh no the the name kyle was uh uh, bequeathed to me by kyle and i believe i've said this a number of times i understand the question now uh so get off my fucking back uh i've been watching along this is a serious question for me Mm. I've been watching along with the podcast, and I want to say thanks for introducing me to so many great films. Yeah, c- consider that your payment for the name. <laughs> Particularly The Innocence and Deep Red, and that was just buttering me up, uh, which are now two of my all-time favorites. Deep Red also led to a financially crippling Giallo obsession, so well, thanks Clay, for that, too. you're not too. alone. Yeah. No, I've been, I've been prodding him in that direction, too, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> What are your favorite films you've discovered by watching them for the first time of the podcast? We kind of covered mm. that a little bit. Um, another one, I you know, I it, we hadn't watched it for the first time, but yeah. like I was really happy that you brought up the Innkeepers mm. because I like taking the time to watch that one again. Yeah, m- more uh, critically, yeah. really bumped that one up for me. Yeah, um, yeah, and th- and that's uh, that might be one where it's like. The movie in my head is better than the movie they made, mm. but the movie in my head was pretty good. So. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. Were there any other ones that really stood out to me as really good? Oh, I will say for for me because I try I tried with the kind of similar version of this question we started with to mm-hmm. stick to the ones that were the list ones. Sure. But starry eyes. Oh yeah, hell yeah! Which was your wild card, yeah. and it was early days. That was I my. Think, I think that was my first wild. I think card. that was like episode five. It was yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I think that is the one that convinced me to really keep doing this with you. Excellent. <laughs> well, because because I was... I'll be honest with you, Starry Eyes is the reason I wanted to do the podcast. <laughs> I built that around the idea around of the idea. showing starry eyes to yeah. someone and then talking about yeah. it. So thank you. I feel like it was it was the one that convinced me, kind of like you you were saying, like not that I thought I had seen everything worth seeing, but I thought I knew the big obvious ones, you mm-hmm. know. And then you were like, well, "We're going to do these wild cards," and then you know, here I, I have one lined up, so we can use this one. And we watched it, and I was like, "This is so." It's still playing with like, you know, cults and mm-hmm. possession and all that, but it was so different yeah. than anything I had seen before. And it was so well done and not a big budget movie mm-hmm. that it really just like re- totally reinforced to me that like there are things out there to discover still. Yeah. And and this is a worthwhile exercise because you're going to you're going to come across some that are like, meh, not my favorite. And then you're going to come across some stuff that's just like. How did I not know this existed? It's fucking awesome. Yeah, I think if we're moving off of the main list um, into the stuff we've done on Patreon, mm. I actually really, I'm really happy we did the uh, Video Nasties yeah. movies. Yeah. Because I had seen a good number of those, but mm-hmm. the ones that I had, specifically Flesh for Frankenstein, <laughs> fucking love that movie. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's so fucking weird. But it's like, you know, it just, it works yeah. in the, the weird yeah. way that that movie works. Well, yeah, and getting to watch stuff like Sleepaway Camp. Sure. Where it's not the best movie, but it's got such an iconic. Have we ever, have we done Sleepaway Camp? Yeah. Did we do Sleepaway Camp? Yeah, we did, didn't we? We did? Yeah. Now I have to check. There's isn't isn't that the one with the, the girl? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I don't remember. <laughs> He's drunk every time we do the podcast. Was that a, a video? Na- when the hell did we do Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> I think it might have been a video nasty. Uh, I don't know. I will take your word for it. I don't to, remember doing it. I have but... to edit out this part. Oh, no, I do. Because yeah. you hadn't. You didn't know about the ending. I did not right. know about okay. the ending. Yes, yeah, and then and then my, my beautiful and lovely husband walked around doing the face for like three <laughs> That's weeks. That's right. I remember yeah. that now. <laughs> Uh, have you seen the movie Terrifier and Terrifier 2? If so, what did you think of Art the Clown? Have you seen Terrifier? <laughs> My answer to this was going to be no and no thoughts. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have seen Terrifier 1. I, I watched, didn't, did Joe Bob do a an episode where it was like some of the short films this, that yeah, guy did? Yeah, it was the guy who did Terrifier. That's where the clown yeah. comes from is that that short film yeah and if you watch that short film i watched like the first one yeah yeah the short film with the clown he's like in the subway station with her or something and the girl gets kidnapped and... something like that yeah, yeah yeah um it's extremely violent it's yeah. like so over the top violent mm. i will say art the clown as a character mm-hmm. pretty good yeah design wise very creepy pretty creepy yeah uh the movie itself was a bit much for me okay um there's a very, I think, I'm assuming, famous scene where um, <clears throat> he's got a girl chained up upside down. Oh, no. And he cuts her oh. in half vertically. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> You're approaching this with such equanimity. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I need to watch this. Like, it was just... Like, I didn't find any story there yeah. for that to make that interesting. Did you find it scary, though? No, I found it. Okay. I found it scarier when he before he started killing people. Yeah, like, he's a very creepy character. Yeah, but once he started like, you know, chopping people up, it didn't really do much mm-hmm. for me. Uh, enough talk about horror movies. What are the oh. best horror TV shows, and why is oh. it that, ep- that? Sorry, and why is it that X Files episode with the inbred family? Oh, oh, home. Yes, <laughs> of course I know it by name. I think it's season six, sure. five, six, I'll one of those. Right. Yeah. Um. Your answer is it's not that episode. It's the Hush episode of Buffy. Mm-hmm. Obviously much more scary. Mm-hmm. And I didn't coach her on that. <laughs> no, I... I that, was, that was her audition to get on the show <laughs> is when she said that. Well, I think, I think that is part of the reason why you invited me to do this is because you knew I was a big Buffy fan. Yes, well, 
I it was one of many reasons, yes. yeah. Um but no, no, I I I my vote is for that episode of Buffy because I saw it when it aired. Mm-hmm. And I was a child and it scared the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure if I had seen that episode of the X-Files when it aired and I was a child, it would have traumatized me forever. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Um, (laughs) so I get it, but, but yeah, hush, hush from that, that season of Buffy is my vote. You know, as far as the X-Files go, Mm. when I was watching it, when it was on, I wasn't, I don't think that I was as traumatized by that one as I was like the Fluke Man episode. The Fluke Man. The guy in the, the, the leech guy in the toilet oh yeah like that i remember being really creeped out or even yeah. like uh stretchy boy yeah stretchy guy wasn't my fave yeah that was um, that was pretty also it's even creepier because that guy's not a very cool dude in real life but ooh, yeah living up to his characters <laughs> really <clears throat> embracing it um yeah i find those sorts of episodes of uh, like scarier as well because it feels so invasive Mm -hmm. you know like the way you avoid the family from home is you just don't break into a farmhouse where a known kind of crazy local family lives right um but the way you avoid avoid the fluke man is you can't no he just shows up in your toilet one night come off a dead ass (laughs) uh and also Mm -hmm. anyone who is around my age knows that the scariest episode of television is the episode of punky brewster where they get lost in the cave you made us watch that one Halloween. <laughs> yeah, we did. One year we did, everybody brought their childhood mm-hmm. scariest episode of TV. Yep. And uh, I think some of them held up pretty well. Yeah. Like Hush obviously holds up. Yep. Punky Brewster one. I think yep. I... Th- everybody in the room was scared. Except you, I guess. But everybody Except in the room me. was scared. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. We, I think we watched a Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Oh, some of those are really good. Yeah. Some of those are still like kind of mind bendy and, and crazy. That was a good show. Yeah, I love that show. Who should do that show? What are we doing these movies for? <laughs> uh, just how important is being scary to a good horror film? Ooh. Can there be a good horror film that fails to be scary? And can a terrifying horror truly be considered a bad film? Is the fear factor the most important metric? Hmm. So for me, I I will answer the last question first, where I will say for me, the fear factor is not the most important Mm -hmm. metric. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some movies that I would rank really, really highly that don't give me any sort of like biological fear response. Like when I watch Psycho, Mm -hmm. I don't get like, like, you know, like you're sort of, it's a different type of fear. And I think that's the the complicated thing is is there's that sort of visceral fear that like a jump scare will give you or something that that you're encountering for the first time and you don't know what's going to happen and so it freaks you out. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking for me the first time I watched The Descent. Sure. I got really genuinely scared. Mm-hmm. Um and then there are other movies that are that are not that type of scary but they are f- terrifying when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Like when you put yourself in the character's position and and you think about how it would feel to be them in that moment mm. where that is the is the frightening part the psychological aspect of it yeah um i would i would say I, I like some one of those types of fear has to be present for me in some capacity like one flavor of fear mm. needs to be present in a movie but it doesn't have to be that that sort of like knee jerk reaction yeah. you know what i mean yeah you know i i'm not totally sure because I think I think I value the ones that are scare, like legitimately scary, probably higher. Mm. But I do feel like more so than a lot of other genres, horror tends to be at its best, <clears throat> or or it, it's much it, it can be it's much more of a roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. Is kind of how I judge things. Mm. So like something that I don't particularly find scary, but I find inventive and sure. well made. Or with a lot of interesting ideas, I m- will probably put that higher than something that was just like viscerally disturbing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I don't know if I put it higher, but it's, it's kind of a different scale. Yeah. You know, like for instance, Return of the Living Dead. Hmm. I don't really know. Well, I personally don't know if I'd call that movie scary. It's, it's right. very funny. Right. Although it does have zombies coming up out of the ground in the cemetery. There you go. 
So maybe I would. But anyway, it's it's a very funny movie. Yeah. But it's like it's it knows what it is and it mm-hmm. executes it well. Mm-hmm. I think that's what is important to me. Right. Because there's a lot of the worst horror movies are the ones that think there's something and completely fail to execute. Mm-hmm. Usually that means they're just fucking boring. Right. Like uh I remember when I was first getting into this stuff and my friends and I were renting these movies and mm-hmm. we would end up renting these, you know, like the the blockbuster specials where sure. it's like, you know, the nun from down under or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, this is an hour and a half of people slow walking through hallways and like yelling at each other. Right. It's like, there's nothing scary here. There's nothing inventive. It looks like shit. Right, right. You know, there's yeah. there's... There's you're nothing... sort of missing out on the whole experience of why you go to see a movie in the first place where you're yeah. like there's there's nothing here at all like the characters aren't great it looks bad the plot's kind of boring it's kind of predictable I, I know what kind what kinds of horror movies you mean with yeah. those those sorts of like lower budget but they're big studios just looking for kind of a quick buck yeah 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 but you know the question can a, a truly can a, a terrifying horror truly be considered a bad film <sighs> i don't really know yeah that's a really difficult question yeah. because i i think there are some movies i mean I, i'm thinking for me especially the sort of like um like torture porn movies mm-hmm. where there's some stuff where it's like it's disgusting and and violent and horrifying in that way yeah. so you like don't want to watch it you know right. like you, you find yourself wanting to look away because it's just so gruesome mm-hmm. and that is a type of fear sure but i would argue some of those movies are bad yes sure yeah you I, know i think it um, i think it's very subjective of course because of course. like something that one person finds terrifying might make them love that movie. Yep. And if it's not something you particularly find terrifying, you might see through that and be like, this movie kind of sucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think that's a really, that's a really tough question. I, I try to mm-hmm. give things a bit more of a benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. um, when it comes to that stuff now. Cause I know that everybody takes things in differently. Sure. And I think a lot of it kind of depends on like, when did you see that movie? Sure. Like, how old yeah. were you? But also, what was the environment like? And what kind of mood were you in? And were you paying attention? Or were you on your phone? Yeah. Because yeah. I find, I, I, you know, I will get sucked into a movie much more easily if I'm not also, like, scrolling through Instagram. Right. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah. With all that being said, mm. Phantasm still sucks. Yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> has Clay ever met an IMDb trivia section he couldn't regurgitate? <laughs> I don't no. know, Clay, have you? No, of course not. <laughs> it's half of this show. Uh, I don't know who wrote this one. What makes a good jump scare good and a bad jump Ooh. scare... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know who the, wrote the next one, mm. which is, uh, what is your favorite jump scare, parentheses, pop-up face? Ah. But that is related to the other question, which is, which makes what makes a good jump scare good and a bad jump scare bad? I think personally, yeah. you can just tell when they're cheap. Like there's, uh, yeah. there's just something about the way that they're executed mm-hmm. when you can just tell that they're there for the sake of hitting the the buzzer, right? As opposed to actually trying to elicit a um, a response. Yeah. But, you know, like I, I think the best. I think we've probably talked about this. Mm-hmm. I think the best jump scare of like the last 20 years Mm -hmm. is the one from um, Hill House, Legend of Hill House. Yes. In like that second to last episode where the two sisters are arguing and then the the other, the dead sister's face goes. Yeah. Appears in the car between them and they both. Yeah. 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 That was so good. That one is A, unexpected and B, literally happening to get this ghost sisters from to stop arguing with each other. It's like it's it's a (laughs) well done it's a jump scare that matters to the story you know right and it's not just like it was the cat in the basement Mm -hmm. you know like like some of those can be fine um like i was i was thinking about um the movie the conjuring Mm -hmm. i think there's some really good jump scares in that movie yeah um i really love that movie actually i know i know some people think that those movies are silly but i really like that one 
And I think what works is because there's there's the scene in that movie where the mom is playing a game with the youngest child. Mm-hmm. And it's the game where they are playing hide and seek, but with the knocking right, or, or the, yeah. the, the, the clapping, I think sure, yeah. it, it is. And there's the, the scene with the clapping where the hands come out of the wardrobe and clap. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple others where she's like in the basement and there's knocking. And then like, you know, like there's, there's a couple jump scares in that, that work because they, they fit in with what's happening in the moment. And they just, they, they seem like they're well done and, and like placed very intentionally. Yeah. It's not just the sort of like, you know, the door slamming just to make everybody go <gasps> to like try to build up tension. Right. I also find that the, that the bad ones are very telegraphed by music. Yes. You know, they've got yeah. like a big musical yep. crescendo kind of building behind them and then something happens and you're supposed to go, ah, and then it turns out everything's fine. It's just somebody coming in with the mail or something stupid like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? The ones that I really don't like are um, the ones that are uh, an entire scene's worth of someone wandering around, mm-hmm. and you know the only reason they're doing this is because they're going to throw something at you, right? And it's I I think there's the the psychology behind it is oh I'm you're building suspense, yeah. But I just find that to be cheap. I think it also depends on like. <clears throat> Is the person just wandering around aimlessly or is it like a relatable situation? Right. Because another example I'm coming up with, and it's another one from a movie that I think a lot of people think is really stupid, which is the uh, Amityville Horror remake with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, I've never seen that. I saw it when it came out and at the time I really liked it. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't watched it in a really long time. Um, It might be absolute garbage. I might have just been enjoying Ryan Reynolds with his shirt off and a beard. That's fine. Um, but there's a jump scare in that movie where one of the kids gets up and like the house has started acting up. Mm -hmm. Weird shit has started happening. The kids are scared and don't really want to live there anymore, but their parents say they have to. Mm -hmm. And one of the little boys wakes up in the middle of the night and he has to go to the bathroom and you follow him out of, he's, you know, quietly out of the bedroom, the dark bedroom and down the dark hallway all the way. And he makes it into the bathroom and he turns the light on. And it seems like he's made it and he's fine. And he's yeah. peeing in the toilet. And then the camera angle like changes or something. And you just see this absolutely horrifying face nice. over his shoulder in the mirror. Those, those, those work well. And that was like, that's a good jump scare because yeah. it's just like fits into the scenario mm-hmm. well. And it's a kind of relatable, like it's scary because it catches you off guard. But it's also scary because we've all been a little kid sure. who was kind of scared of their house at night in the dark. I'll be honest with you. Mm. A couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in my late 30s. So this mm-hmm. is in our my mid 30s. <laughs> I was up very late. And I on, it might have been after I watched Host. The, oh. Which scared the fucking shit out of me. Yeah. And made my whole house <laughs> seem very scary for that night. I went to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I could hear something in my shower and that's like one of my top fears household fears yeah is that there's something behind that shower curtain Mm -hmm. i swear to god i could hear like the shower curtain was moving in a way that was not natural and i did not look and i just left the bathroom in (laughs) retrospect (laughs) i think it might have been a mouse it was probably a mouse probably a mouse but at the time (laughs) horrifying yeah and it was the kind of thing i've you know i've always thought like I, I my personal opinion of of the supernatural mm. is I I'm very fascinated by it I enjoy it and I want to believe mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Um, I'm sort of a skeptic in that way where it's like I don't really believe but yeah. I'm open to the possibility yeah At the same time I think if I ever saw a ghost I would have a complete <laughs> mental breakdown yeah you would just be finished yes yeah so I kind of want to but mostly don't. Because that would just you would like, love you would love a scientific study to come out or for someone else sure. to encounter something and there to be like undeniable evidence. Yeah, but, but I you would don't have need like to be a, the person who confronts it directly. No, I would have like a Lovecraft level brain split <laughs> break with reality. Where it's like, yeah. I looked back and saw the unknowable, and mm-hmm. now I can't fathom yep. life. You yep. know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of jump scares, there's two that pop into my head, mm. ironically. Ah, to, um, to that pop-up face in your head. Yeah, recently, yeah. the one from Halloween 2, where the 
security guard was wandering around like by the the mm. garbage mm-hmm. and then it ended up being like a cat yeah that's the kind i don't like yeah because yeah. it's like you're just wasting time right or like the entire beginning of friday the 13th part three yes um flip side mm-hmm. another john carpenter really good john carpenter one is from the fog where uh i think it's jamie lee curtis mm-hmm. where it's a total fake out where they do like they're kind of setting you up for it and then mm. they do the one thing that it seems like it's the jump scare uh-huh. and then that locker opens and the body oh, falls out. That's yes. a really good yep. one. Yep. That's so a good I think one. it's the unexpected thing yeah. is, is what makes a really good one. Yeah. Because as I said, I don't like ones where people are just walking around for extended period of time. Yeah. The one big exception to that mm-hmm. is Exorcist 3. Oh, the hospital scene? Yes. Yes. Which... Big scissors. It, it was, it's like the only thing anybody knows from Exorcist <laughs> 3, but we'll get to that eventually one yes. day. Yes, yes we will. Um, <clears throat> way back in episode 12, uh-huh. Amanda made the bold claim that Leatherface was the most sensual slasher villain. <laughs> Four years and 88 episodes later, Jesus, does she maintain this opinion? Absolutely. Hmm. Who else? Who else is there? I don't know. Are you going to say Roy? Frank the Clown? What the hell's the name of the clown? Art. Art. Art, Art the Clown does not strike me as particularly no. sensual. Did you say Roy? Yeah, I did say Roy. <laughs> I mean, who knows? He d- he did have a son, so I don't. I don't think so. Seems like he could be a lover. I don't nah, know. I stand by it. Um, I, I will. I will. I will debate if somebody wants to to, to propose a different uh, candidate. Uh, this one is difficult. Um, hmm. I, so it's make a top 10 so far and then see if any of the next 100 episodes break into the top 10. That might be a long-term project, but yeah. it's like, I remember after 50 episodes or maybe 25, we mm. did like a ranking thing. Yeah. And that was difficult enough. I don't know if I could do, uh, let's put it this way. Yeah. I don't think my top 10 coming out of 100 episodes mm-hmm. would be that surprising. Yeah. Like I feel like. Yeah. Anybody who listens to the show could probably guess what it would be, and I'd probably right. be like, "Yeah, pretty yeah. close." Yeah, if you if you scroll back through our episodes, I feel like it's it's pretty easy to pick out at least a good like seven or eight that seem like kind of shoe ins yeah. for for a top ten. Um, yeah, I think if you start adding in like wild cards and stuff, it gets a little more complicated. But yeah, yeah. tough tough to do that. Um, the moment. Let's see what. What underrepresented topic would you like to see a horror movie about? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I would say I think there's a lot more potential to do more horror movies about aging mm. and about like, quote unquote, elderly people. Sure. Um, Because, I, you know, I was thinking a little bit about in um, X. Mm hmm. A lot of people who've watched X will say like, oh, yeah, the scariest scene, the scariest and grossest scene is when uh, the couple, the old couple's having sex on the bed on top yep. of her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get it. I, under- I understand why that is an opinion. But I also think there's a lot more room in the genre for doing sort of more of a take on a traditional slasher movie where the protagonist is maybe like a 70 year old woman. Sure. Because it kind of naturally builds in some of the stuff that can feel a little bit fake about yep. other sort of slasher movies where it's like, well, why doesn't she just get a weapon? Why doesn't she just hit him? Why doesn't she just run? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, if she's 74, maybe she can't. And then how do you deal with that? And then I think there's also a lot of fear around aging. Oh, definitely. In yeah. our in our societies in general that you could really play for. And I'm not talking about like M. Night Shyamalan's movie about the beach. That I was going to you... say, you never know when you end up on that beach where you get old. <laughs> where you get old. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot you could do in in that kind of realm, even about you know people who can't do the things they used to be able to do, and yeah. the frustration and the fear of getting closer and closer to to the end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons I want to. I'm looking forward to talking about X because yeah. weirdly enough. That scene yep. made me go, this movie's fucking great. Yep. Because I found myself similarly repulsed by it. Yeah. But then I, I I went, oh, wait a minute. This is two people making love. Yep. The only reason this is disgusting is because they are old. Yep. And in the generalized, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
culture that is mm-hmm. seen as disgusting in and of right. itself. Right. And I was like, that's, I was not expecting to be thinking that right. deeply about this movie. Yeah, and that, that's why I think there's a lot of potential for doing more horror movies <clears throat> that involve issues of like elderly and aging people yeah. where it's sort of like, yeah, why do we think that like you hit a certain age in your life and you stop being capable or you stop being a sexual being right. or you stop, you know, participating in life the same way because yeah. you don't, you yeah. know? Um, do you have an answer to that question? Do I have an underrepresented topic? <laughs> I had a great idea. <laughs> I don't know if I should give this away because I might actually write this, but mm. um, I wanted to do a horror movie about, um, it was called Open House, mm. and it was about trying to buy a house. <laughs> and it was like- pick, I could see that. Did you see the movie The Menu? No, but I know I know the premise. So yeah. in my head, it was like, imagine the menu, but instead of a shitty restaurant, they're at trying to buy a house. Yeah. And I was like, I think there's a lot of potential there that's a lot more relatable than dumb food. <laughs> Extremely high-end dumb food. Yeah, I didn't like that movie. Um, <laughs> what actor or director would you like to see take on a horror movie? I, I, oh. I don't have any reasoning behind this mm. answer other than the fact that I would watch her read the phone book, but uh, I would say I would like to see a Margot Robbie horror horror movie. Oh, although that's I guess what Samara Weaving is for. She's basically yeah. looks identical to her, so maybe that wouldn't be that great. But yeah, I think she's she's one of those people who is um, taking control of her career in mm. a really interesting way. Like yeah, that movie Immaculate. Yeah, um, Sydney Sweeney, who's in that. Mm. I guess the story behind that movie is when she was. S- like 16 she yeah. auditioned for that movie oh didn't get it and then the movie never got made and she liked it enough that she ended up buying the script <gasps> and then hired the director and got the movie made herself wow which is very cool yeah that's, like, that's awesome. the kind of thing that I'm, in, I'm i'm into that's super fucking cool i'm gonna admit I, I don't really have a good answer to this question yeah i don't know it, it's it's yeah, I don't. I don't have like so many of the directors I I really like are already horror movie directors. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and then I don't really have a ton of like actors or actresses that I'm like, this person is an unrecognized talent, or this person's so amazing in this role and they should do yeah eight million other things. Yeah, I guess I'd like to see Zendaya and something like that. That would be cool. Yeah. I was trying to think of it. My mind was going blank for like I was thinking about directors and I'm like yeah they all have kind of done it. Yeah. Anybody who I'd be interested, I would like to see someone like sort of like the Jordan Peele situation where it's someone you don't expect. Totally. Yeah. Those are always the most fun when it's somebody who comes from from like way outside of it yeah. and brings something really new. And that's always to fun too, where it's like oh Jordan Peele, he's a big mm. you know, uh, humor guy, comedy guy. <laughs> <laughs> professional then, funny man yeah, Jordan and I, I love it when these guys are like no I just love horror movies too and so right. I want to just make those yeah yeah uh, what horror movie has the best look slash aesthetic <gasps> and best soundtrack ooh <clears throat> wait so is that one one movie for the, each of those or yeah not it doesn't have to be the same doesn't movie have to be, it might end up being the same movie um probably one of the giallo movies yeah. you know i'm thinking what probably one of the argento movies yeah you know it's kind of inescapable with the with the goblin soundtracks um and then something like you know like suspiria where it's so visually stylized um i also really liked the look of in the earth yeah i think the, the look yeah. of it's really interesting and kind of psychedelic and unique um and it has those really beautiful peaceful sort of forest scenes in these really ominous right. tense foggy, moments yeah. um yeah so soundtrack i'm gonna go for anything with with goblin and mm-hmm. and look i might go for in the earth you know i was thinking about that and that's like there's so many to choose from and what i came down on was if i close my eyes mm. what movie would i want to be a part of mm. and the answer is black christmas <laughs> yeah I just want to be in college in the 70s you during just, Christmas it, During a cozy season where you can wear a big sweater. Yeah, where yeah. it's just, every, it seems really cozy and the lights are really garish. Yep. It's just, I don't know, something about it makes me feel very comfortable. Yep. Um, soundtrack, <laughs> yeah, that's that's so tough. Let me look at, can I look at my collection. Yeah, you got to turn and look at all the records. Um, 
don't know. It's it's tough not to go with a a, a goblin because <sighs> they're just it's so good. It's so iconic. It really yeah. gets stuck in your head. You know, I will say, I don't know if The Exorcist gets enough credit these days for that. For sure, it's not, obviously, it has the big famous song. Yeah, but you know, as I think we talked about when we covered that. I don't think a lot of those movies yeah. have their soundtracks without that. Because, like, The Exorcist gives you Deep Red. It directly yeah. ties back to the same kind of uh, 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 syncopated rhythm. Yeah. And then Halloween, yep. direct descendant from there, which then, of course, births its own thing. So I think yeah. The Exorcist is a very important one as far as music goes. Yeah, I just, I just thought of another one for me, which is The Witch. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Love the soundtrack to The Witch. It's did so you, fucking spooky and weird. Did you know that the... Ex, did we talk about this? I can't remember if we talked about this, that The Exorcist is what made Virgin Records. No. Yeah. Virgin Records at the time was just... I think it was literally just a record store. Oh, wow. Owned by... What's his name? Brant, Branson. Branson. Yeah. And uh, he had started up this small label where he was representing some people and one of the mm-hmm. people he was representing was Mike Oldfeld. Is that wow. his name? O- Oldfeld? I think Oldfeld? that's his name. And that record going on to that movie and turning into a massive hit is what jump-started Virgin Damn. Records. Yeah. What an origin story. Thanks, yeah. thanks Satan. <laughs> and the final question, mm. was there any questionable parenting in Bram Stoker's Dracula? <laughs> I don't know, Clay, was there? Who's to say? Nobody knows. <laughs> No one's ever watched no it. No one will ever know the and answer. And we will never know. A um, hundred episodes in. <laughs> yes. How do you feel? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Having a good time? I am. How about you? Same. I <laughs> I, I, do, I really look forward to doing the show because I Same. do. I, I find this to be very fun. I don't find as much like I'm. I'm really being like doing a lot of brain homework mm. like I, I just enjoy talking about these things i think it feels less like homework when it's like you're genuinely interested yeah and i think like part of the thing that got tough by about a couple of the patreon years was when we were doing like all the friday the 13th movies sure. in a row and yeah. they're very samey mm-hmm. i think the the great thing about our main list is that there is a lot of variety yeah like you you get to kind of sample a lot of different subgenres. And we get to move around through like time and, and styles, which I think makes it keeps it fresh. Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 very fun to be able to come in knowing that for the most part that there's going to be a couple things that we're both really excited to talk about. Yeah. Like in a movie that has a crazy scene in it mm-hmm. being like, can you believe that? Yes. <laughs> you know, and getting into that stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I find the most fun about about the show and also about the genre is yeah. I feel like you don't really. There's not a lot of the, a lot of other genres that can, I think, um, generate such interesting, for lack of a better term, discussion. Yeah. Whether it's actual discussion or just two people going like, "Yeah, it was fucking crazy," <laughs> you know, like you don't really get that with comedies or dramas and stuff as much, right. unless you're like a, you know, Shakespeare professor, which is fine. That's he great says, too. Full of disdain. <clears throat> no, I love Macbeth, and that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a lot of fun and, uh, I look forward to the next 100 episodes. Same. And if you're not sick of us yet <laughs> and you want to help support the show, head over to patreon.com slash the Penske file where you can follow us as we make our way through the Halloween series. Yes. What's funny is we, we recorded the first three very, or I think in January or something, very close together. Yeah, yeah. And so um, now when we get back into part four, there has been an appropriate amount of time for us between <laughs> yes. three and four yeah. to make it feel like the return of Michael Myers is really the return of Michael Myers. Yes, we're, we're really going to get back to back to basics. Yes. I don't know if that's going to make me like that movie, but we'll see. We'll find out. But uh, thank you guys so much for listening and supporting the show after 100 episodes. Thank you for the questions. Yes. Thank you very much for the questions. Um, and uh, thank you Amanda thank you Clay and we'll see you next time bye everyone bye everyone